Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie Martin and I'm a graduate engineer for ACOM and I get the privilege of working on some really great Northern Ireland water reservoir projects. Now not everybody gets the opportunity to do that but that's okay because everybody has seen and hopefully taken a bath before. Mm. Now you're probably thinking that the similarities between these two just stop at they both hold water but you'd be wrong. First of all they both hold water in what is known as a basin. So you have your reservoir basin and you have your bathtub or your bath basin. They also have um, ways and means of getting water into that basin. For your bath, this is through a series of pipes leading to your spout. And for your reservoir, this is through rivers, streams, overland flow and pipes as well. They both have ways of being able to control the volume of water in their basin. For your bath, you can pull out the plug and allow the all the water to escape from there. Or you turn your tab, pull a lever, and allow water to come in, controlling the volume that way. For your reservoir, it's very similar. You have an outlet point at which you can open valves, just like your tap, turn them, and allow water to escape, controlling the volume. So now we have our wonderful bath filled with water. We're going to add some nice, lovely things to your bath. We're going to add some bath bombs. And hopefully as that starts to dissolve, you can see a few different things happening. First of all, it's introducing some colour into the water and it's making it cloudier. There's actually a scent of it if you're close enough. But you've also got this solid part at the bottom. And if you've ever used one of these, you'll know that unfortunately it doesn't all dissolve. There's a little bit of grit that gets left at the bottom. Now that's all right, as long as you've only one, but what if we add a few more? All of a sudden you can see more colour. The, co the water's becoming cloudier and you've got this lovely stuff at the bottom that just won't dissolve. More grit is being added all the time. Now you're wondering what has this got to do with the reservoir? Well the same thing happens. As water flows over, over land through rivers to the basin, different things happen. First of all it picks up these bath bombs, these particles, some of which dissolve completely and they're so tiny that they're invisible to the naked eye. This is what introduces colour in the bath bomb and the scent. Then you've got the suspended load. Those are the particles that are causing the cloudiness in the water. They're so light that they can be floating along in the water and taken to the reservoir. And then you've got the heavy particles, those gritty bits that never quite dissolve. Now they're a problem for us as engineers. They build up and build up in reservoirs and they can cause problems. But let's go back to taking a bath. One very famous engineer named Archimedes took a very important bath. He stepped into the bath and as water flowed over the top, he realized that the volume of water of his body was equal to the volume of water um, that overflowed. And this is the same with sediment. As it builds up and builds up, it raises our water level, causing two major problems. Um, one, increasing flood risk downstream of the reservoir, and two, um, destroying our water supply here in Northern Ireland. And that's, as, as engineers, we try to combat, we try to get solutions to those, those uh, problems. And that is the importance of taking a bath. Ladies and gents, Stephanie Martin, let's hear it for her. As I previously, as I previously said, anyone in the crowd that wants to ask a wee question, uh, raise your hand and make yourself known. I'll be at my common day, but in the meantime, let's hear from one of the judges. The final time was 195 seconds. Stephanie, that was excellent, really entertaining, and I absolutely loved it. Um, I loved your approach, and I loved the bath bombs. Um, I wonder if we can get Northern Iron Water to use some of those. Okay, so let me ask you a little question. In Northern Ireland, we have lots of water running into the um, catchment area. What's going to happen in the future with climate change and when we don't have lots of water? What are we doing then? Well, I'm actually working on a project at the minute that's looking at our water supply in our reservoirs and looking at what solutions we have to this sediment problem. So looking at solutions as to how do we get rid of some of that sediment or how do we increase our storage for future um, because we are trying to future-proof our reservoirs. Right. So what are we doing maybe to drive efficiency in water? You mean in the water supply? Yes, yeah. Um, that I don't know the answer to. Know yet. We're going to encourage um, everybody good. to stop taking baths <laughs> and have more showers. Yeah, yes. that sounds great. <laughs> okay. uh, I had a quick technical question. Yeah. Uh, 
I couldn't quite see the bath bombs, but was I right in saying they were red, white, and blue? <laughs> if they were, that was a complete coincidence. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Fiona? Um. <laughs> have, you, have you invited a journalist, you know, that's usually at Storm, and those are the sort of questions you're going to get. You left me wanting more. I really want to know what we're doing about this problem. It's not something that I was aware of, so um, I just wanted to say well done for explaining it so clearly and making it an obvious problem now. Well yeah. Do you have any questions from the crowd you'd like to give to Stephanie? Pull up the lights a wee bit, probably. Oh. Was climate change, they told us the climate was going to get warmer. What they didn't tell us was it was going to get wetter. What do we do if we have too much water? For our, our valves and that come in, most reservoirs aren't standalone, they're actually part of a series. And with those valves, we can open and close them as we need, or we need to store less water and use more water. But that's part of climate change is it gets wetter, but also our population is growing, so that could sort of keep things in an even keel. Hi. So you presented the narrative and the, uh, the issue, the problem, so to speak. Um, regarding solutions, would I be correct to presume that uh, some of the solutions can be chemical or perhaps through ion, ionization of particles? Um, the most simple solution is actually just the dredging and the, dis the disposing of sediment. So um, in certain cases, we can draw the water level down to a certain level until the reservoir is almost dry and actually remove, physically remove the silt that way. And that seems to be the most effective, but not always the best solution. It's very reservoir and um, environmentally specific. Thanks. Um, water quality seems to be a big issue in Northern England at the moment with fracking and recently here in the uh, North Antrim area last year mm -hmm. or two years ago there was oil exploration in a water catchment area outside Carrick. Is that an issue that you're concerned about? Um, I think that's always a concern but as far as we know um, those don't affect any of uh, Northern, Ar Northern Ireland's reservoirs and as far as we know, there's no exploration car um, being carried out at the moment in that area that you're talking about. Is that everyone? Stephanie, could I just finish up by making a serious point? It's never easy going first. No. Yeah. You know, it, it's it, terrifying. It, 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 it must have been terrifying, but you didn't look terrified. You were very, very clear. You showed a lot of innovation. Congratulations, and we wish Thank you well. You <laughs>